Will AI change the world? Well, we don't really know, but it will certainly impact teaching and learning here at our university. And that's what we'll talk about today with our guest, CIO Alexander Braun. So, thank you so much for joining us today. Chief Information Officer, what exactly do you do here, Tim? <laughs> well, I'm responsible for all IT systems um, and our digitization strategy, and uh, I'm basically trying to um, improve our workflows, make them more digital, and make our life easier and faster. Okay, cool. Uh, but, okay, we're talking about AI and generative AI tools. Everyone's talking about ChatGPT. Do you personally use it? Well, yes, I actually do. Uh, I'm currently in the course of writing our IT strategy for TUM, and we are trying to, well, enhance it a bit uh, with some new, better words, and um, therefore we are currently actively working with it, yes. Okay, cool. Because strategy, I mean, that's taking a step back. So AI in general, is it really the big game changer that it's hyped up to be? Very good question. So, I mean, there are always these two black and white things. One is, uh, well, a new technology, great, it will change everything and everything will get dramatically better, faster, everything. And the others, of course, are always, well, very negative and think, oh, it could, well, take over the world. <laughs> and of course, that's, I think both are not the case. I think it's a very helpful tool. Um, however, we need to really take care to use it in a way that it really helps us. And we also need to understand that these, especially these generative AI tools, are always an IT system that needs some rework and you need to check what the results are. Okay, but talking about reworking and understanding, you get the impression, particularly in the last few months, that uh, the development is speeding up. So everyone's, no one's been talking about ChatGPT a year ago, but now suddenly everyone's talking about it. it's like this exponential growth. So what's your take on that? Was there some kind of trigger event or is it just a development that has reached us now? Well, I think the, especially the, um, the, the huge um, enhancements in the LLM systems and their capability of doing these, the, the the uh, contextual understanding of systems that really enhanced the overall quality and made it definitely this additional step further and, and everyone can use it now. So, so LLM, that's uh, large language models. So we're talking about generative AI. So I, AI that generates texts and content in general. That's of course, I mean, talking about universities, um, what's the impact here, I mean, our students, I guess they use it a lot, but I, in how far do we have to, what's our take as a university? Yeah. Well, we are very pro of these, um, <laughs> these systems. We, and we are well aware that everyone is using them. I mean, that's not really a uh, very uh, <laughs> huge yeah, surprise sure. for us. Um, however, we need to take it from both sides. I think, uh, and in terms of an examiner, a lecturer, we of course need to adapt our teaching formats, our exam formats, and well, also take into account that uh, there are new methods available to generate these texts. However, on the student side, you also need to be very careful what you do with these methods and how we use them. And of course, also be aware that on the other side, there's also a person who is aware that these tools exist. So. Um, to, to sum it up, I think um, we definitely need to improve or change, adapt our teaching and uh, examination processes. But um, on the other hand, there are also systems, for example, if we're talking about coding, you need to um, learn that. That's something, if you do an exam on that and use ChatGPT to generate the code for you, well, of course it can do that and it can solve it for you perfectly but are you really learning something from that? And that's always also a very important question that you do not, uh, you must always remember that we are an, a facility that wants to help you learn new stuff and yeah. do not forget about that. <laughs> so is it a tool that we need to 
kind of deal with or will it you know, even help us develop new skills possibly? I think it will very much help us. So if we're talking, for example, about Grammarly, which we recently announced for all the students to be free, yeah. um, I use it a lot. I used it before we, uh, we introduced it here at TUM. And in my opinion, it really helped me improve my English writing skills. Yes, I can confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, so I think uh, these tools are there to improve our output. They can give us valuable hints of course, we should always remember there is a human behind that. We should always take that into account. And these tools will probably not be able to do our research. So if you're talking about thesis, these, these additional, these new improvements, these new methods you want to develop, I think I don't see that ChatGPT can help us there in the near future. So it's a, a tool to improve our methods, but nothing to suppl supplant them, if you will. Yes. Okay. Now we can, live, <laughs> we can live with that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your insights. Um, if you want to know more about TUM's take on AI, we've linked our researchers and learning experts' most recent papers in our bio. And this is also where you find the link to Grammarly, the campus license, and more info on what's currently allowed at university and what's not. By the way, today's introduction and this part of the script were also written with the help of Grammarly. So have a great summer and we'll be back with more TUM student use in September.